Hi, I'm Brad, and today I'll be using my own kitchen. So today we're going to be making pierogies. Uh, this is typically a, a traditionally Polish dish. Um, I'm going to modify mine a little bit, almost more like dumplings. We'll see how this goes. Uh, traditionally, you'll find them with onions and potatoes inside, maybe some meats, it depends. Uh, today, we're going to be adding pancetta and leek to our pierogies. So the pierogi dough is the easy part. For this, we'll need flour, salt, eggs, sour cream, trust me on that, and butter. For the filling for the pierogies, leeks, or really any other onion product that you like, pancetta, a handful of potatoes, maybe some garlic, salt and butter, and might add just a little bit of milk. The preparation on this one's pretty straightforward. I need a cutting board and a potato peeler. And we're in business. So I'm just gonna peel the potatoes into the trash, and once, I'm, once I have that done, uh, We'll cut them up on the board here, along with the leek. Oh, these potatoes are kind of green. Oh, Jesus. God. The trick to peeling potatoes is to make sure that you don't toss it in the trash while you're peeling your trash can. Good trick that nobody tells you about peeling potatoes. Don't throw the potato in the trash. All right, so we got our potatoes are peeled. Um, I have my nice butcher cleaver here uh, that we'll be using to just cut them up. You want to cut these up into about inch cubes, uh, all around the same size. The main reason is just so they cook a little faster. If we cut these all up into about an inch size, they'll they'll boil in about 40 minutes instead of a couple of hours. One thing I forgot. While I'm cutting those up, uh, I'm going to want to take this pot. Fill it about three quarters of the way with water, uh, attach a little bit of salt in there, and begin letting that boil um, just to get the potatoes started, really. Once they're cut up, I'm just going to drop them right in there and let it begin to boil. The nice thing about this pot, we're going to be using the same one to boil the pierogies once we're done with the mashed potatoes. Yellow potatoes are nice and soft, so it's not too hard to cut through. Plus, this is a sharp knife, as we've discussed. So this is about the, the cube that I want. Um, a little bit bigger than an inch, I guess I said, but I want to keep them around the same inch, inch and a half. Uh, and again, we're just adding those to the water as I go. Just so you can kind of see what we're talking about. Temperature for the burner is 10. Water's boiling, or will be boiling, I should say. The potatoes are just taking a water bath up until the point that they begin to boil. So, all right, now, if you've never had a leak before, as uh, something very common in, in Asian dishes most of the time, uh, they are not very clean, right? They, they grow in very sandy soil. Uh, so I pretty much want from here to there on this leek, pretty much. Like just, there's not a lot of space. I'm going to cut off all these fibrous leaves. There's also a lot of dirt and soil trapped in there, which you can probably see. Um, so I'm going to wash this, then I'm going to cut it. I'll probably wash it again, then we'll dice it. I'm going to cut this right here. Right, right about there, right where the leaves meet the, the leek, the, the leaves meet the stem, I should say. But so we cut that off, it is dirty right where we cut it, so I'll kind of keep that side of the board here until we go through there. Chop the end of the leek off too, with all those little hairs. And then a lot of times, the outer edge of this leek too is just going to be too fibrous to eat and kind of see that little extra skin on there. Um, so I want to peel off this as well just to get to the softer inner part of the leek. So this is going to be perfect. We're just going to dice this uh, as soon as I wash it one more time to get as much salt and texture out of there, or salt sand and texture out of there as I can. All right, so perfectly prepared. That's the edible part of our leek. Uh, the most tender part is this white part here. The higher you get, it's a little fibrous, um, but it feels okay. I think we're going to be all right. Uh, and then we just dice these. This is not the right knife to do that at all, but hey, everything is fine. All right, so I'm going to set these aside for now. Um, 
We're going to cook them actually in the grease that the pancetta leaves behind when it cooks. One more thing on the leeks before I actually incorporate them. I'm going to just pour, pour water over them, try and get any remaining dirt out, um, and then kind of scoop them off the top into a separate bowl. Uh, I can still see a little bit of dirt on there. I just want to make sure we get it out. That's really all the prep work that this takes. The potatoes are boiling and cut up. And we're good there. It'll take about 45 minutes or so. Um, the leek is diced. I'm going to get the pancetta. I get my pancetta from Safeway. Um, it already comes you know, diced up and, and pretty nice there. Um, we're going to cook it, let that crisp up a little bit too. But from a preparation perspective, we're done. Uh, if you have trouble finding pancetta at the grocery store, you can get it at any Italian deli or butcher. And for the leeks, most grocery stores do carry them. They're just not a very common thing. Um, but I love them. Uh, you can find them in most Asian markets. All right, time to cook. Um, so the potatoes are already boiling. I guess I kind of cheated there just for timing reasons. We're just going to put the pancetta in a pan on around medium heat. Uh, it'll be there for about 10 minutes and it should crisp right up. It should kind of turn like a golden brown, kind of crispy on the outside, almost like bacon. Um, once that's done, we'll take that out of the pan, put the leek in and give it maybe four or five minutes just to soften and firm up in the, in the grease left from the pancetta. So potatoes are boiling. I just give them a little stir every once in a while, make sure that they stay the same. So just really gonna let the pancetta firm up. It's gonna take a minute or two here still. We're coming up on probably five minutes that's been in there. So just a little longer, but it's starting to brown. Just give that some time. All right, so I checked the potatoes. They seem done. Uh, we're gonna strain them out into a I'm just going to strain them out and keep them in the same pan uh, and add all this stuff together. And I know it's granite. I'm going to do this anyway. All right. So I put a fork through with one of these potatoes. They are just super, super soft now. So that's perfect. And I'm going to add a little bit of butter to this. Oh yeah. Two tablespoons or so. Uh, and then we're just going to mash it and start that process. Um, this doesn't have to be as smooth as mashed potatoes, but it's why I mentioned the milk. Um, if this doesn't soften up, we might add some milk to it. And I do think it's going to need just a little. So I bet a quarter cup of milk, I would think. Maybe a little less than that. But just to get that nice. There we go. And again, just enough to get that nice creaminess, you know. And now I'm adding all the extras. So if I were doing this over, I might add a little bit more leek to the recipe. It looks like it's getting a little lost in the potatoes, but we'll see. And I mentioned the garlic. Given that, this is probably the right time to add the garlic. Uh, so I really like garlic, but this should already have a lot of flavor. So probably a teaspoon, maybe a half teaspoon. That's all I'm going to do. All right, so I'm going to use a fork to fluff this just a little, make sure we get that garlic mashed in appropriately. Uh, and then I'm going to just move it to the bowl because we're going to need this to boil our pierogies. So for these pierogies for the dough, we need two cups of flour. And cut one. In the bowl. All right, and a teaspoon of salt. I'm just going to eyeball that. Okay, all right. This is a super simple recipe for the dough. So I've added salt and flour. <laughs> Pretty much going to add an egg, sour cream, some butter. You're done, right? Uh, so egg first, though. We're just going to put one in and kind of mix it in. One egg. Just kind of, I'm just using a fork right now. We'll use something else later, but we really just want to kind of incorporate the egg. Quarter cup of sour cream. Let's see what I think here. All right. Probably don't need water in this recipe for this, but we might have to add some. I'm not really sure how this is going to go. So we'll see. I don't think I got the right proportions here at all. <laughs> Not a dough. Let 
it's kind of starting to look right, but I don't think this is going to do it. Now we're going to add a quarter stick of butter. It's supposed to be softened. I'm going to um, microwave this probably just because it's not, and I need to incorporate this a little. I'm also adding a little bit more because it doesn't look watery enough yet. All right. Hopefully that comes together as a dough. And I'm getting kind of a I'm getting kind of a flaky consistency. Um, it could have been too much flour, but I think I'm going to add some water here and see what happens. Just add a smidge of water, a little tiny bit, a little more water. I think I left out like a half cup of water. That's probably what I did here. All right. So I think the dough missed uh, about a half cup of water. Um, so I have added that in. You can see it's kind of turning into the, the dough that I want it to be now. Um, I'll give it just a little bit here, a little, a little more incorporation. Um, I'm gonna use my hands, get a little dirty. But yeah, that's that's what I want to see. Perfect. Okay. All right. So once you're done, this is what it's gonna look like. Um, I got some more to incorporate down there in the bottom a little, but uh, we are just gonna kind of roll this, knead this in together for a little bit here. And uh, yeah, for now, that's all we need. Uh, I'm gonna let that sit, rise for about an hour. It won't really rise, but it's just gonna cool down in the fridge for about an hour. All right, I'm gonna turn the cameras off, clean up, get that pot ready to boil, and we'll go make some pierogies once we're back. All right, so I filled back up our pot. Uh, it's got some water. Hopefully it's gonna start boiling here soon. Um, I'm going to roll out the pierogi dough now. Uh, it's still a little sticky, so the recipe does call for us to knead it a little bit until it loses its stickiness. I did some of that, but it is still a little sticky. It might just be a little too wet. Um, so I'm going to liberally flour the counter when I roll it out. It's going to take care of some of the stickiness, but it also makes it hard to eat. So not too much flour. We'll try to keep it you know, somewhere in the middle. I'm really bad at that, so we'll see what happens. Also, I'm very excited. I get to use my... Uh, pastry sealer. It's the one thing I actually have this for. Uh, it's been in my uh, drawer for probably a decade. And this is only the second or third time I've used it because uh, pierogies are the only reason I have to own one. But now I've got it. So leave this here. Um, I've got to flour my dough from time to time. I've got to flour the rolling pin. Um, there should be a lot of flour in what happens next here. And so you can see here, the fridge has actually helped because this is not sticky at all. Um, but as I roll it out um, and as it warms up, it's gonna get stickier again. So it's part of why the flour, oops. <laughs> I don't have flour spots all over me by the end of this. I'm trying to spread this out a little just to stretch it to similar uh, thickness before we start rolling, but I'm just gonna put that right there. Flour the top a little, get my rolling pin. Uh, and start. We want this around an eighth of an inch thick. Um, the thing about pierogies is that it's really easy to get too thick. Uh, it's, this is very similar to dumplings throughout the world, right? You don't want too thick of a dough on your dumplings. This is my wonderful granite or marble, wonderful marble rolling pin from uh, this uh, pampered chef. My sister uh, has a pampered chef uh, or is a pampered chef representative, so. Uh, she got me this wonderful marble rolling pin, which I like a lot. And we're just going to roll this out. Um, I'm just going to roll this out until it's pretty thin, as much as you can get, pretty much. As thin as an eighth of an inch or so. This is the part of making uh, pierogies that scares me the most. Uh, I'm really bad at rolling things out to a thickness. Uh, I don't know why, I just am. So that's, uh, we'll see what happens here. Give it a little, okay. Oops, oh, geez. <laughs> All right, well, 
I only ruined part of it. Uh, you don't want to roll out too many times with this because it's just going to get harder and harder to eat. Um, so we're going to cut rounds. Jeez. All right. My shirt has had a flower disaster. I've washed most of it off. We'll see how that goes. Um, this should make around 20 pierogies, I think. Two dozen, maybe. Um, I'm using a cutter that's around I guess an inch and a half, two inches diameter, uh, and just going straight through. I should probably actually flower that too. Just get a little flower on the cutter there. Um, but just straight down, little, make little circles. We're just going to take these and fill them, and there's not a lot to it um, until you get to the completion phase, right? So, and again, as many as you want to. I'm not too concerned about how many I cut out here because I can't possibly eat all these, and I'm alone today, so no point in making a million of these. But um, pierogies really do keep pretty well uh, for a couple days at least in the fridge. Um, great for, you know, warming them up for leftovers. Uh, always worthwhile. So I've got four, 12, somewhere around 18. Um, again, I did have some of the dough fold over, but this is pretty much what you're going to end up with. This is super thin, might be too thin. Um, and what we're going to do is actually just take the filling and start filling these and then sealing them. But we're just going to take enough filling to kind of fill this up. Maybe, you know, a small amount. I mean, not not a huge amount. That's probably even too much. Uh, and then we're going to kind of stretch the pierogi around the filling as much as possible. So you'll see it kind of, yeah, there we go, kind of fill in like that. Now, you can pinch this shut. Most people do. Uh, I do one additional step. So I mentioned my pasta sealer. Uh, and all this does, just kind of roll it along the edge of the dough. So right now it kind of looks here, you can see I've pinched it shut. What this allows me to do is actually roll along the edge of the pierogi. Gives it an interesting little look. Um, it also seals it with a pretty official looking edge. Let's just separate that. So I guess that wasn't quite what I wanted, but, uh, but it is sealed now pretty well. So that's ready to drop in the, uh, drop in the boiling water. Now these are kind of small actually. So not want to use a larger cutter size, but this will be good once it plumps up a little. So rinse and repeat. I'm just going to keep doing this. All right, well, uh, that's done. It's a mess, I'm a mess, but here's what the pierogies look like. Got two plates, pretty much. This could probably make two dozen, if, if not a little bit more. Um, I do have some some dough left over, um, which I could re-roll if I wanted to. It's not such a big deal, but they're gonna get harder every time you do. Uh, and then I have quite a lot of filling left over. So I'll adjust the recipe that's being posted online to the ingredients that you see here. Um, so that you don't end up with such a large amount of leftovers. Uh, that said, um, water's boiling, so we're just gonna be dropping these in the pan pretty much until they float, a couple of minutes, let it cook through, uh, and then take them back out. Let's get to that. All right, so not a lot to this. Uh, take my plate of pierogies, uh, drop them in. Careful about, obviously, uh, Hot water, right? So don't hurt yourself. Do one plate at a time, around 10. We could probably do more, but I don't want them to stick together or too, feel too, too scrunched in there. They'll probably stick together anyway, but 
people say when they're float they're, when they float they're done um you can see some of them are kind of reaching to the top or boiling to the top as they're thrown around by the water um, i'm gonna turn it down just a little to try and lessen that um but in general uh, we're just going to wait a few minutes let them kind of soak in uh, cook through and take them out once they look a little more done so and they will float consistently when they're done all right so it's been a few minutes you can kind of see they're hovering on top of the pot here so i'm gonna start taking them out and we're done uh, that's pretty much it water's done boiling everything's put away i cleaned the counter a little bit it's going to need a deeper clean here shortly but uh yeah um, so how to eat these or how to plate them. I'll typically take two or three and put them on a plate like this. Um, add a little bit of butter, let that kind of, you know, melt around them. Uh, you can add salt if you want to. Try them first. Um, most times, you know, salt and pepper, things like that go well. You could have a side of sour cream with this. You could add mustard and onions, which is another option. Um, I think I could probably could have added a little more leek to this recipe by the time I got done with it. But overall, I'm very excited. Uh, let's give it a try. a pretty good piece there. A little bit of butter. Mm. It tastes exactly like I remember. Uh, this is a family recipe and, and it's delicious. <laughs> so, so this has been Bar in My Kitchen. Uh, thank you so much to those that are watching. We're going to be in soon with new recipes from other people who are actually borrowing my kitchen instead of me just using mine. But I thought it was time. I haven't seen you guys in a while. So hope you enjoy the pierogies. <laughs>